Okay, let's do an example on how to solve the DC analysis in a circuit. And as our first example, why don't we start with the base bias amplifier. So a base bias amplifier uh, has a single base resistor. Current flows down here and goes into the base, uh, flows from base to emitter, and that causes a larger current to flow from collector to emitter. How much larger? About 300 times larger. And again, in the base bias circuit, there's a single base resistor, and the emitter is grounded. Now, we solve these uh, circuits. We solve them all the same way. The first thing that we do is we redraw the base drive circuit. So over here, the power supply is drawn as a single source, which powers uh, the base drive, which determines how much current goes into the base. And it also uh, passes current down through the collector. So what we want to do is we want to detach these into two separate supplies. And we, we, want, we want to redraw the 18 volt source so that we, and the 390k ohm resistor, so that we can see that it injects current into the base. Then what we do is we solve for base current using KVL. So we rewrite this equation. We got 18 volts here. We write a KVL equation. We do, do a bit of algebra. And we come up with that IB is equal to VB minus 0.7 over RB. VB is the base voltage, so that's 18 minus 0.7, that's 17.3 volts over 390K, gives you 44.3 microamps. Now this kind of makes sense. Another way that you can look at it is you can say, well, I started with an 18 volt source, 0.7 volts of it went here, so there was 17.3 volts that got dropped across some resistance. Which resistor is it? It's this one, so it's 17.3 over 390K. The next step is to solve for IC and IE. So IC is just a straight multiple of the base current. The beta is given as 300. So IC is 300 times 44.4 microamps. That's 13.31 milliamps. IE is the combination of the base current and the collector current. So it's just a little bit more. Uh, we say IE is beta plus 1 times IB, which is 301 times 44, which is 13.35 milliamps. Now that we've got all of the currents in the circuit, we know how much is going down here and how much is going down here, we can solve for the voltages. And one of the voltages that we want to solve for is the voltage across this resistor. So we know how much is current going is, is going down through here. That's IC. And we know its value, so we can say the voltage across that resistor, which is ICRC, 13.3 milliamps times 750 ohms, gives us 9.98 volts. So this guy has 10 volts across him, and on one end it's got 18 and current's going that way, and it drops about 10. So that's going to leave about 8 volts across the transistor. So to solve for VCE, we would say that VCE would be VCC, 18 volts minus the voltage across the resistor, which is 18 minus 9.98, which is 8.02 volts. So now we've got the Q point, essentially. We've got 13.3 uh, uh, milliamps going through the transistor and 8 volts across it. Now we need to draw our load line, so we need to find the saturation current. So the saturation current is, is how much current goes through the transistor when it's shorted like a switch. So what you would do is you would consider this to be a switch, and then you would calculate how much current is going down here. So IC sat would be 18 volts over 750. That comes out to 25.6 milliamps. We'll just write that down there. Uh, once you find the saturation current, you find VCE cutoff, and that's when you look at the transistor as being an open and ask how much voltage would there be across it. So if this was open, uh, no current would flow here. You had 18 there, you'd have 18 there. So the cutoff voltage, VCE cutoff, which is right there, is 18 volts. So now we've got a graph. We can plot our Q point. Our Q point was at 8.02 and 13.31. Uh, plot that point on the line, and we can see that it's pretty much right on the line. 